Mr. President, we thank you for organizing this high-level thematic debate. The idea of human rights is rooted in several ancient traditions and religions. As the more contemporary notions of the state evolved, notions of individual rights also started to crystallize. Colonization and the subsequent major wars between colonial powers provided another context to the evolution of the rights of peoples and individuals. The United Nations Charter and the, Uni and the Universal Declaration on Human Rights became transformative in their impact by bringing the concept of human rights firmly into the international domain. While much of the success of the human rights agenda has been achieved because of its underlying consensus, unanimity is often difficult to achieve because of complexities and inherent contradictions on many other issues. For instance, between individual rights and common good, the role of state sovereignty, the relative merits of pursuing civil versus political versus expansive versus more expansive rights, the highly divergent context and immediate concerns of the UN member states whose number itself has multiplied four times in the last seven decades, emphasis on thematic versus country-specific efforts, and the politicization and select targeting of countries. Mr. President, the human rights agenda appears to again turn increasingly contentious. A more constructive and non-confrontational approach that is sensitive to the genuine concerns and capacity constraints of countries is needed to assist them to improve their implementation of human rights agenda among their citizens. An aggressive naming and shaming exercise has its limits. It is often counterproductive and tends to divide member states into opposing camps. The primacy of national efforts in the realization of human rights, along with due consideration for the values and other specific contexts of individual countries, must guide our efforts. Sustained efforts are needed to overcome inherent ambiguities in governance and administrative arrangements of the Office of High Commissioner for Human Rights, including in funding, geographical representation, and strategic planning. These are hindering its optimal performance. The special pro procedures mandate holders are an important mechanism. However, their proliferation and duplication of mandates is not very helpful. The independent and impartial nature of the special procedures must be maintained to avoid any perception of bias. Transparency about their funding would lay to rest these apprehensions. It may be advisable that the conclusions and recommendations of the special procedures be first shared with the country concerned before being made publicly, being made available publicly. Mr. President, the challenges of poverty eradication, armed conflict, terrorism, democracy deficit, and impunity continue to deprive millions of people from full enjoyment of their human rights. Democracy, good governance, rule of law, and access to justice and civil society engagement are essential for safeguarding fundamental freedoms and promoting and protecting human rights for all. It is imperative to recognize the right to development as a distinct, universal, inalienable, and fundamental right that is applicable to all people in all countries to build collective and sustainable peace and prosperity across the world. Mr. President, regrettably, earlier today, we have seen an attempt at misuse of this UN platform. The attempt came from Pakistan, a country that covets the territory of others, a country that uses terrorism as state policy towards that misguided end, a country that extols the virtues of terrorists and provides sanctuary to UN-listed terrorists, and a country that masquerades its efforts as support for human rights and self-determination. Pakistan is the same country whose track record has failed to convince the international community to gain membership at the Human Rights Council in this very session of the United Nations General Assembly. The international community has long seen through such designs. Cynical attempts, like the one this morning, 
therefore, find no resonance in this forum or elsewhere in the United Nations. As a diverse, pluralistic and tolerant society, India's commitment to the rule of law, democracy and human rights is enshrined in its founding principles and we remain strongly committed to the promotion and protection of all human rights for all through pursuit of dialogue and cooperation. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank